In podcast episode number 56, I talked to Thomas Mitchell about mobilizations with movement, abbreviated as MWMs. Thomas is a wrist and hand specialist physiotherapist and working towards his PhD at Sheffield Hallam. He's a physiotherapist of 25 years standing in primary care, private practice and sports. He's a first contact practitioner, clinical supervisor and member of the British Association of Hand Therapists. We started out by talking about the definition of mobilizations with movement. Thomas explained that for him, MWMs are an opportunity to go on a journey with a patient. To him, they are not a treatment adjunct, but a way of assessing, playing and seeing whether you can do things to change symptoms, whether that might be pain, stiffness or a functional loss. We also talked about the two different forms of physiotherapy. One is the test, treat or advice retest model and the other form is symptom modification like MWMs are focusing on. You try to change a symptom in real time, repeat that and then get the person themselves to see whether they can treat it themselves. We then dug deeper into the principles that underlie the Mulligan concept. One concept follows the acronym PILL, which stands for P equals pain-free, I stands for instantaneous, and the double L stands for long-lasting. The long-lasting part is thought to be achieved by self-mobilization. The other basic principles follows the acronym CROCS, which stands for contraindications, repetitions, overpressure, communication, knowledge, as well as sensitivity. In simple terms, it describes being red flag aware, forging a therapeutic relationship, and it focuses on monitoring how the patient is doing during a treatment episode. Next, we discuss the idea of the positional fault and other simple but faulty biomechanical explanations healthcare professionals often give to patients. Thomas told us that he's not afraid to say, I don't know, when asked about the effects of MWMs. He might say something like, you've got that movement in you and for some reason you've just forgotten how to do it. While Mulligan still believes in the idea of the positional fault, Thomas explained that Mulligan is a massive pragmatist. His approach basically comes down to this. If you have a movement that's painful or stiff and you apply a force one way and it makes it worse, you push it the other way to see if it makes it better no matter what the biomechanical rules are. Our next topic was the differences between MWMs and classic manual therapy. One thing that stuck with me is that Thomas called the Mulligan concept manual therapy light. According to him, it's more of a bottom-up approach than a top-down approach, like in classic manual therapy. The main difference is that patients have the agency over the movement, so it's an active or active assisted mobilization. Some physios even classify it as movement-based therapy and don't define it as manual therapy at all. A great advantage is that patients can continue doing the mobilizations themselves at home or with a partner. Thomas also agreed that there is much overlap with the McKenzie approach, which is also really focused on self-treatment. So there are a lot of positive things to be said about MWMs, but the evidence is mixed. Thomas explained the difficulties of evaluating the Mulligan concept in a randomized control trial. One problem is that often only one movement is performed, while the pain-free movement is often different for different patients. So a directional preference is often not included in the studies. RCTs also don't take into account the irritability of the patient and that the treatment dose is always constant in a trial, which does not reflect a clinical environment. At last, no self-treatment is encouraged in the trials, which is an essential part of MWMs. All in all, Thomas explained that RCTs very well fit the test, treat, retest model, but they don't fit well the symptom modification model. We then went on to talk about responders and non-responders to MWMs. Thomas mentioned that treatment response, in his experience, is independent from the body region that is affected. 
He explained that it's hard to predict which person will respond well and which person doesn't. He also doesn't pigeonhole his techniques based on pain classification. He rather, quote, goes on a journey with his patients where together they identify things that are going on in their lives from a holistic perspective and they look at everything that they can possibly do within the context of what physiotherapy can offer to see whether they can find answers. I then asked Thomas how MWMs can be effective for tendinopathic based problems given that they are a joint based technique. Thomas mentioned that he imagines that the effect of a lateral glide on the radius in patients with tennis elbow might have an influence on proprioception. To him what counts is the window of opportunity that we can create with the technique to allow people to load up. When dealing with peripheral problems, Thomas stressed that his number one focus is strengthening. Towards the end of the pod, Thomas mentioned three reasons for physios to learn MWMs. These are one, it can help dealing with patient expectations who are often focused on some form of manual therapy to address the touch-based therapeutic relationship. Number two, it is fun to apply the mulligan concept with patients who are fear avoidant and to be able to modify symptoms immediately. And number three, just giving people loading programs can sometimes be boring and MWMs can add that little bit of therapeutic touch and it empowers patients to self-manage at home. If you want to learn more about MWMs, Thomas recommends the Mulligan app for people who want to start applying the Mulligan concept. Furthermore, if you want to book a course in your own country, you can find an overview on bmulligan.com. Thomas also offers his own courses on encore.co.uk. To finish, Thomas mentioned one last reason for young physiotherapists to learn more about symptom modification. According to him, there is a real chance that artificial intelligence will take over screening and diagnosing. What AI can't do, however, is taking over our one-on-one -on -one communication and symptom modification approach. All right, so this was a brief summary of podcast episode 56 with Thomas Mitchell. I hope I could raise your curiosity to listen to the whole episode and to learn more about the Mulligan concept. Thomas also included some techniques for the stiff shoulder, the elbow and the hand and wrist in his online course, the upper limb focus that he created together with his colleague Andrew Cuff and us. Check it out on our website physiotutors.com forward slash courses. If you would like to have more resources on this episode, head to our website at physiotutors.com where you can download the transcript and infographic. And as always, thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in another video 